what's going on guys so in this video we're going to be creating a back end to a blog using something called keystone js which is a headless content management system and it allows us to create a graphql api it gives us an admin area we can log into create our blog posts we're going to implement users with authentication some access control and then you could essentially take this graphql api and you could connect to it from something like react with the apollo client which is really popular or really anything at all and if you're not familiar with keystone or graphql don't worry about it we're going to go through basically start from scratch and i'm going to explain everything as we go um, graphql is is essentially a, a query language that um, you know you can connect to with just one endpoint as opposed to a rest api where you have all these different endpoints all these different routes uh, that you would hit to do certain things and, and fetch data. Uh, and with a REST API, you really have no control about the data you get from that endpoint. Uh, let's say you wanted just, a, just the title from 100 different blog posts, you can do that with GraphQL. You can't do that with a, rest, a traditional uh, REST API. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in. This is keystonejs.com and um, the documentation is, is pretty straightforward. So if you have any issues, uh, you don't under understand something that I talk about, you can find it in the documentation. So if we go to getting started here, uh, we will need a database to get set up. And you can see that Keystone supports both MongoDB and Postgres. I believe you can also use it with Prisma, but we're going to use MongoDB and you can install it locally if you want, but we're going to use something called MongoDB Atlas, which is a um, cloud database. It's basically MongoDB in the cloud. So I'm going to go to mongodb.com. And you just want to, if you're following along, just register. It's completely free, no credit card needed or anything like that. And I'm just gonna sign in here. Uh, let's see, I have a couple different accounts. I think this is the one that I want. Okay, so let's see. So if you just signed up, you won't see this right here. Basically what you wanna do is create a cluster. So you'll see a, a green button, create a cluster, just choose the defaults, AWS is your provider, and it'll just set you up with a free tier and you'll be able to have a cluster where you can then create databases with collections. So once you have that created, just click on collections. And this will show all the databases as well as the collections and the data if you do have any data. So from here, we're gonna say add my own data and database name, I'm just gonna call Keystone blog and collection. Let's just create our post collection. All right, so now we have a, a database Keystone blog with a post collection. Now there's a couple other things we need to do before we move on to Keystone. One is the user. So if you go to database access and say add new user, you just wanna create a new user here. I'll just say Brad123 user and password, leave the defaults. And then under network access, you're gonna to wanna to add an IP address. Now you can al allow access from anywhere. This is basically to connect directly to the database. Um, so if you say allow access from anywhere, you can do that. You can also add your actual IP address, which, which I'm gonna do because I did run into some connection is issues uh, when I don't do that. I think it's because of my VPN. So I'm just gonna take this off screen for a second and add my IP address and confirm. And now I can bring this back over. All right, so we should be all set up. Now the next thing that we need to do is go to this connect button and then connect to your application. And this is the string we're gonna need to put into our code when we're ready to connect. Um, but you do have to replace the angle brackets password and this angle brackets DB name with your database name. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm just gonna paste this uh, off screen real quick and just replace uh, replace my database name with what I call a keystone blog and then replace my password and make sure you also replace the angle brackets. All right, so then I'm just gonna copy that and now we're ready to move on. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here and the way we can get, there's a few ways we can get started. We're gonna use um, create keystone app, which will just generate kind of a boilerplate for us. And I'm gonna use NPX, so you do need Node.js installed. I believe you need at least Node 10 um, to run keystone. So let's say create, uh, create dash keystone dash app and then whatever we want to call the folder I'm just gonna call it keystone dash blog 
Okay, so now it's asking us for a project name. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Keystone Blog. And then it's going to ask us which database we're using. We're using MongoDB. And now we need to put in where our database is located. If, if it's on your local host, it'll look something like this. But I'm going to go ahead and just paste in that string that I copied from Atlas. And I'm going to say yes to testing the connection. That was successful. And then I have a couple options here. So this this first one you can actually have the users and authentication all set up for you however i don't want to do that because i don't want to just throw a bunch of boilerplate code at you guys and you you won't know what's going on so we're going to go ahead and choose blank and set that stuff up ourselves okay so we're all set let's cd into keystone blog and then i'm just going to open up vs code in that directory okay so now we have uh, all our files on the side now we chose the blank template so there's not really much here In the package.json, you can see we have some keystone modules, including the mongoose adapter. So it uses mongoose under the hood um, to interact with MongoDB. The app admin UI is the admin GUI tool. And then we have GraphQL. Um, we also have Graphical, which is a client to make queries and mutations to the to the um, API, which which I'll show you and then Keystone. And then we have this dev script to run our dev server. Now it runs on on port 3000 by default, but I'm going to change this. So I'm just going to add port equals 5000 here just because if you use something like create react app and you know, you have your front end dev server on 3000, we're going to run this one on 5000. So that's the only thing I'm going to change there. And then in the index file, there's not much here. Again, we chose the blank template. So we're just bringing everything in, bringing in the adapter. We have our project name. We have the adapter config with our database string, which I don't want to keep in this file. I'm going to uh, put that into a dot env file in a minute. Um, but then these comments will get rid of. Then we have just initializing Keystone with the adapter. And finally, we're exporting Keystone. We have this apps array with the GraphQL and the admin UI app. So that's pretty much it. That's all they give us to start with. But we should be able to start the server. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, open up my terminal here and say NPM. Actually, I'm going to run NPM install, even though the dependencies got installed. Sometimes I run into some issues if I don't do this. Okay, so now we can run NPM run dev and that should start on port 5000. And you might see this, uh, this message here. No cookie secret value was provided. We'll, we'll fix that in a minute. But what we have here are, are three URLs. So first one is, is to the admin interface. The second one is to graphical, which is the client we can use to direct, directly make queries and mutations. And then we have the actual API URL. So we're going to go to the admin area here. And there's not going to be much because we didn't choose to use authentication and have that stuff included by default. We're going to do that on our own. So basically it just says no lists is no list defined. A list in Keystone is is basically a schema or a model. If you've ever used Mongoose or SQLize or something like that, you know, you create your, your models with your different fields and stuff. So we're going to have a post list. We're also going to have a user list. We don't have anything now, so it just doesn't show anything. Um, and then this link here, GraphQL Playground, this takes us to the graphical client where we can make queries and, and I'll get to that. Right now we have nothing to query. So we're going to close that up and go back to VS Code and we're going to cut this off. So we do have to restart the server when we want to you know, make changes. Um, one thing I'm going to do is install .env. Uh, so we're going to install that just so we can have some environment variables. I don't want to have my database string right here in the code. Um, so while that's installing, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that and we'll be able to say process dot env dot and then Mongo underscore URI. Now to use these environment variables in a file, we have to include um, dot env. So let's say const. Uh, const.env and set that to uh, require.env and just add on to the end of this dot config and parentheses. Okay, now in, in our file structure here, we're going to create a file called .env, so period env, and let's create a Mongo URI and let's go ahead and paste that. database connection in and we might as well add the cookie secret here as well just to get rid of that message. Otherwise, it just I think it randomly generates it every time you start the server. Um, so cookie secret, this can be anything. Just say ABC one, two, three. 
And there's a VS Code extension that I have installed called .env. That's why you're seeing the, the uh, color highlighting here. You might not see this, but you can install that extension if you'd like. All right, and I just want to make sure that actually we have to add our cookie. Um, let's see. So right here, let's say cookie secrets and set that to process. Let's say process dot env dot cookie underscore secret. And then let's just run it again just to make sure that everything's OK. And while it's loading in the front end here, you'll see it'll say like keystone loading. All right. Now, there's still no lists or anything. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Cut that off. And for the lists, we're going to put them in their own files. So let's create a folder called lists and inside lists we'll create a file called post.js. Okay, capital P singular. And we want to bring in from here the field types. So let's say require and we want to set this to at Keystone JS slash fields and the fields that I'm going to want to bring in here are text select and relationship, which I'm not going to use just yet. We're going to wait until we have users that we can so we can assign a relationship to a post from a user. Uh, and then let's create a variable here. We'll call this post fields and set that to an object that has a fields object uh, inside that. And before I forget, let's just export this. So module dot exports set that to post fields. And the first field that I want for a blog post is a title. Um, so the title is going to have a type and the type is going to be text. OK, and then I'm also going to give this an is required and set that to true. Okay, and then let's see, we have a title. Let's also do a body. So body was going to have a type of text as well. However, I do want this to be a, a text area in the admin UI so we can add this is multi line and that should make it a text area. So we want to set that to true. Um, let's see, what else do we want? So we have title body. Let's do a status status we're going to give a type of select and when you have a select field you can add your options which is going to be an array with an object and we're going to have a value here uh, for the value let's say published for the first one and it's going to be all caps for the value but then we can have a label and just say published all right and then we're going to copy that down let's do unpublished so unpublished and then this will be unpublished and then we can also have a default value. So let's say default value and the default will set that to published. All right. OK, so title body status and then we want an author. So let's say author and for now I'm going to set the type to text, but later on it's going to be a relationship. Uh, and then let's also say is required and set that to true. OK, so that should be it now to to use this list. We have to, of course, bring it into our index JS. We're going to bring this in up here. Let's say const and we're going to call it post schema and set that to the file, which we want to require uh, dot slash list slash post. And then we want to go make sure you go under here because um, we're using this keystone object and then on that we have create list and we want to give it a name. So this is the post list and then we want to give it its schema. So it's similar to what you would do just using mongoose directly. All right, so we'll save that and then let's go ahead and run. And we're still not going to see um, you know, authentication or anything yet because we haven't added that. But now you can see we do have this post area. So we have a table. Obviously, we don't have any yet, but we can go ahead and create. So let's say post one. This is post one and it's published by default. And for now, I'm just going to type in the author. And then this is like a summary of, of our data and then we'll save changes. We get a little, you know, save successfully up here. So we have one post. Let's create another one. We'll say post two. 
say this is post two. Author, we'll say John for this one. Okay, save changes. And that was added. Good. So we have our posts, and we can, of course, you know, update them. And if you go to your MongoDB Atlas and you go to collections, you should see your data. You can also use MongoDB Compass, which is a desktop tool. Yeah, so these, this should load. We should see our posts. I don't know why this takes so long. If you're, yeah, if you're going to want to, you know, deal with your database directly, I would, I would definitely recommend using Compass, not this. But you can see post one, post two, good. So now let's go ahead and um, before we implement users and authentication, I want to check out this GraphQL playground, this graphical tool. So we're going to make this a little bigger. And from here we can write queries. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually we just want to say query. And in here, as soon as if I start to type the word all, you'll see I get a drop down with this all posts. So any list that we create, like if we create a to do list, all to do's will, will automatically be accessible to us through here. Um, so we want to say all posts and in here is what we want to return. So we want to get, let's say, the ID and the title. And that's something you can't really do with a traditional REST API. You just get all the data. But here we can query specific data. And you can see it just gives us, you know, the ID and the title of all the posts. Um, we also have this underscore all posts meta. I don't want that. And in here we can get like the count. So if we run that, you'll see I'll get the count, which is two. We have two posts. And then if you want to mutate the data, so if you want to create a new post, update, delete, that's that's where you would run a mutation. So let's say mutation. And just like with all posts, we also get create post and create post if we want to do multiple. So let's say create post. And then in parentheses, we want to pass in um, a data object here and we can add our data. So let's say title. Uh, we'll call this post three. We already have two. Uh, what else? Body. Let's say this is post three. And then we have um, author, let's say Brad, and then status is published by default. So um, I'm just going to have these three fields. But then here we can also say, what do we want to return back from this new post? Let's just get the ID back. All right. So I'll press play or run. And there we go. So we get that ID. And then in history, this history button, we'll see all of our past uh, queries and mutations. And let's say we want to fetch all posts again. We'll say use and then run. And you can see that post three is included. And if we go back to uh, our, our admin area here, you can see oh, you have to reload. You see post three has been added. All right. So this is a really nice tool to just, you know, get familiar with how to make queries and, and mutations. So now what we want to do is implement users. So let's cut the server off and I'm going to go under lists and create a new file called user.js. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing that we did for our posts. We want to bring in. Uh, let's bring in at Keystone JS slash fields. And what we want to bring in as far as fields, let's get text. So we have email. Um, password is, is a field we want to bring in. And then also let's bring in checkbox because I'm going to have a box for is admin. All right. So we're going to have an admin role for users. So here let's create user fields. And we want uh, an object called fields. And then down here, let's module dot exports user fields and the first field for a user is going to be the name and that is going to be the type of text and let's say is required and we'll say true for that and then let's do an email actually I'll just let's just copy this down so we're going to have I think four fields so the next one is going to be email which is going to be text required and let's also make it unique so we can actually add is unique true. Um, next one. Let's see. This one's going to be password. And the type field type is going to be password. 
and then let's see is required is true and then let's have um, sorry about that let's have uh, is admin and that's going to be a checkbox all right so that should do it let me just shut this ringer off all right now we need to bring this in just like we did with the post so right here let's just copy this down and bring this in from user this is going to be user schema and then down here this is going to be we're going to create a new list for user and say user schema now before I run the server I just want to add a relationship between the author the post author and users so we already brought in the relationship type so all we have to do is go down to author and instead of text let's say relationship and then we just want a reference to another list which is going to be the user list or uppercase user list and then let's set many to false because it's only going to be you know a, a one post is going to have one author so i think that should do it let's save and then let's run our server let's reload this we're still not we still don't have authentication we haven't done that yet but you can see we do have a users area and we can click create and let's create a user here and email will say admin at example.com set password i think it has to be eight characters minimum so i'm just going to do one through eight and i'm going to make this user an admin save changes and then let's go back and let's create another user that is not an admin so we'll say john doe we'll call this let's say user at example.com password Okay, and I'm not going to check is admin for this user. All right, so we have our users now to do authentication. Let's go back here and let's see. I'm going to just close these list files up. We don't need those and we need to install. Uh, we need to install something called uh, password auth, I believe. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, auth password. So let's say npm install and it's going to be at keystone js slash auth dash password and then we want to bring that in up here so we'll go right here and say const and we want to bring this in from uh, keystone at keystone js slash auth password and what we want to bring in from it is our password strategy so it's going to be password auth strategy and then down here let's create a strategy so make sure you go under the list and let's say const auth strategy and we're going to set this to keystone dot create auth strategy which takes in an object and we want to put the type which is going to be our password auth strategy then we want the I think it's the list let me just double check see where is it uh, yeah we, so we want to put our list that is that we're using for this which is our user I mean it could be like staff or something like that um, I would imagine in most cases it's user and then type not type um, config so config we want to just tell it which fields we're using for like the username and the, and the password so the first one is going to be identity field and for us that's going to be the email of course you could have username if you wanted and then for the secret field we're using password okay and then i believe that's it so we just need to add that down here where we have our admin ui app these values here we're just going to tack on off strategy save that and now when we run our server when i go back to the browser here and reload we should then see a login page okay so here's our login page and, and you can actually create a react hook to replace this logo if you want uh, and to change this up a little but right now any user can log into this area so i'll say user at example.com 
it doesn't matter right now if there is admin or not. You'll see I'm able to, to log in. I can you know create posts or whatever. And it says logged in as John Doe. One thing that we can do now, though, if I click on to edit a post or to create a post, there's this. Uh, and I didn't even show you this yet that we could drop down like that. But you can also click this button here, which will just put in whatever user you're logged in as, which is nice. So for this one, we'll choose Brad. For this one, Brad. All right. So let's make it so that only admins can log in. Um, if you have a site where it's just like your personal blog uh, and you don't you don't need front end registrations or anything like that, then this is fine. But you might want to have different roles. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll go ahead and sign out. Okay, and then let's go back, cut the server. And in this um, ad, this new admin UI app in the export, we can add is access allowed and that's going to be a function. So we'll pass in an arrow function. And this takes in an object and we're going to destructure it and pull out authentication and then destructure that and we're going to pull out item from that, which is the user. So we can actually just rename it to user and then whoops. And then down in here in the function body, let's console log the user just so you can see what that gives us. And we need to return from this a Boolean. So it has to be true or false. Now we have this. If it's a successful login, user will be full, right? It'll have the user object. So let's say return um, and we don't want to. It's hard to talk and type. We don't want to return the user object itself. We want to return true if it's there. So I'm going to put the double bang in front of it. So we're basically saying if this user is here, then return this as true. Um, but we also want to check to see for admin. So we're going to say and make sure that user dot is admin. All right, so we'll save that. And now let's run our server. And let's reload. And now if I try to log in as user, it shouldn't work. So let's say user at uh, example.com. OK, so it didn't let me log in. Now let's try admin at uh, example.com. And I can log in. So now it now the user has to have that is admin field uh, in order to log in. OK, now that only pertains to, to this admin area. It doesn't complain. It doesn't complain. It doesn't pertain to uh, to our API itself. So if you were to use like React and Apollo or, or anything, use curl, whatever to, to hit this API, you'd be able to add posts, add users, delete them and all that. So we can set up some access control and it basically we're going to use the same function. And just to show you what that logged for us, you can see it logged the user right here. All right, now I'm going to actually take this function. So from here to here, let's cut that and I'm going to put it in a function called is admin. And then const is admin set that to that function. All right, we don't need to uh, console log the user and get rid of that. And then I'm also going to just have another one here, but this one is just going to be is logged in. And we'll just remove this right here. So it'll just check for the user. It doesn't matter if they're admin or not. So we have these two functions we can use now in the schema. We can actually create some access control. I'm sorry, not there right here in the list. Um, so we have post and then post schema, but we can take this away and put in an object and then just put in fields and then our post schema dot fields object. So this this is basically doing the same thing as we just had. However, we can now add more on to this like access and we could set this to true or false um, and it would pertain to, you know, reading, create, delete, all that. Or we can set it to an object and set read, for instance, we'll set that to true since that's public. <coughs> Excuse me. But let's set create. Uh, let's set that to is logged in and we'll do the same for update and delete. So let's say update and this one here, let's say delete. And then for the user, what I'll do is just copy this and let's replace this. And let's see, we'll change this to user 
change this to the user schema. And instead of logged in, let's just uh, we'll just select all this, change that to is admin. So this way to create a user or update or delete a user, you have to be an admin. Now, just to test this out temporarily, I'm going to change the access to the admin area to just logged in. Just so uh, we can test this out and I can show you that the user or John Doe, who's not an admin, won't be able to um, to do any of this stuff. So let's restart the server. And let's go back and reload. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so now we should be able to log in with user at example dot com. And if I go to users and I try to create a new user, it'll show me like the form and stuff. I'll just put whatever in here. Set password. So create. And notice I get this access denied error. You do not have access to this resource. So our API is protected, even though I'm able to, to come into this admin area. Um, the API is, is protected. If I were to try to, let's say, delete a user. You'll see I can't delete the user. OK, so that that protects the entire API, not just the admin area. So let's um, let's go back here and just change change that back to is admin. I just wanted to show you that. All right. So that's what I really wanted to show you is how to create the API, how to create the admin area, authentication and all that. If you want to use this on the front end, which I do plan on doing a video on, you could use the Apollo client. So just to kind of give you an example, you could use this with React or Vue or whatever. Um, so basically you would install the client, install GraphQL and then connect to it. So create this new Apollo client and the, the URI you would put in here is the admin slash API. OK, that's your API URL. And then you could create a query like this. So client dot query GQL. And then this here is basically the same thing that that we did here. So if you want to get all posts, you would put that in here and you could you could call you could name it and then get that data. Um, and then to use it, there is a hook called use query. And if it's a mutation, there's a hook called use mutation. All right. And I will do a video on that uh, within probably the next few weeks or so, hopefully. Um, but that's it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. And that's it. I'll see you next time.